Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Yonit Arthur. You are on The Steady Coach, and it is time for yet another one of my absolute favorite things, which is sharing a success story with you. This one is coming to you from Emma. Emma is one of our YouTube subscribers, and I remember corresponding with Emma and responding to some of her comments early on in her journey, which started around about a year ago, last year, March 2023. Emma reports that she actually first had symptoms in 2019, but that things got really bad in 2023, and she is now doing so much better, as she will share with you in this interview. Another really interesting thing about Emma's story is, like many of you, Emma suffered from a lifelong anxiety disorder before this even happened, and she describes in this interview how that affected her and how that has also affected her process of recovery. I think Emma has a lot of useful advice and wisdom to share here, as well as a story of hope and reassurance for those of you who are still in the thick of it. So please let us know what you think about this interview by leaving a question or comment below if you're watching this on YouTube. As always, you can subscribe to my channel. That really helps me reach more people. And if you're listening to this as a podcast, head on over to YouTube to join the conversation. Love to know what you think. You can also follow the podcast that also helps me reach more people. All right. Please enjoy this conversation with Emma. Welcome, Emma. So good to have you here. Thank you so much. And Again, this is our first time meeting, so I always get really excited uh, when I'm filming a success story with someone who I haven't met yet because I have no idea what <laughs> happened and what your story is. So I'm, I'm here hearing it for the first time as well. Yeah. Um, and I just told you um, before we started that I feel like I'm being a celebrity, and I really do, <laughs> and I'm so happy to be here. Um, so thanks so much for having me. I never thought I'd, I'd see the day, to be honest. So... It's yeah. it's kind of out of body to be here. Um, this morning was really a lot of anxious energy, but a lot of excitement. Um, thinking back over the past year, like the yeah. fact that I'm here is great. So thanks for having me. Yes. Well, it is again so so much my privilege. Honestly, if I could just record success story seven days a week, <laughs> that's just what I would do. I just I I can't do that. I feel like people still need me to give them actionable, like do this kind of information, but this is just my favorite thing ever. And it's such a privilege to meet you. And I'm pretty sure that I remember answering your comments on YouTube. Oh, I, I remember it. your name. So I'm like, I think we've interacted before and I remember where she was at. So we'll see yeah. if any of that it comes back. Any, yeah. Comes back to me while we're talking. Yeah. yeah. So Okay, so let's just start with the basics. So could you just tell us a little bit about you, where you're located, who who this Emma person is anyway? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I live in Tacoma, Washington, the Pacific Northwest, um, outside of Seattle. I moved here about two and a half years ago from Chicago. Um, my story has happened in both locations, um, but I'm 31. I am got married about year and a half ago and I have two cats. I'm a special education teacher. Um, oh, thank you for your service. That's <laughs> yeah. awesome. Yeah. And identify as a highly sensitive person. I have an anxiety disorder, but that's just one facet of me. Um, I'm sure that's not a shock, but yeah. 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 And that is uh, the highly sensitive person thing is something I think maybe a lot of people on who are watching this are going to identify with not all of those folks end up feeling anxious or identifying as anxious and mm -hmm. sometimes they just learn to kind of squish it down deep inside but i think strong feelings are one of the common threads among people that i've worked with yeah definitely um i was going back through some of the past success stories leading up to this with you and i re-listened to parker's i believe mm -hmm. oh, um, yeah. and i definitely resonated with her like i oh, yeah. feel like i'll tear up but um yeah definitely yeah yeah okay so now we know a little bit about you and you've really set the stage for what you're about to describe <laughs> let's see if we can start chronologically though so how did everything get started? Okay, 
Well, first, this is kind of funny, but I made this whole like timeline <laughs> because I was, I was, my, my husband was like, this looks like um, Brad Pitt in the movie Seven. It's called The Mystery. What is this? I was like, it's close to me. Oh, I was thinking of <laughs> Russell Crowe in uh, A Beautiful Mind, do you, where he's like yes, writing like, all those formulas on the board. That, that was what, where my mind went. <laughs> yeah, um, I did just help to write it all out because once you start talking, you're like, well, this happened, this happened and going in order, I think is helpful um, for people too. But I would say um, my journey technically probably started back in 2019 um, when I was living in Chicago. Um, I had I didn't know I didn't know what it was, had my first kind of spout of triple PD. Um, so I remember calling my parents thinking, I don't feel right, you know, something's wrong with me. Um, and I have really bad health anxiety, so I was going to the worst case scenario. Um, they referred me to an ENT and um, I got an MRI and that time around, for, this was like in the course of like a month or two, um, that time around, once I got the MRI results that I didn't have the worst case scenario, for some reason, I was able to just move on from it. It was a horrible time. Like those couple of months, um, I was meditating all the time. I was trying to figure out what was going on. But once I knew it wasn't the worst case scenario, I was kind of like those people that you described that watch a couple of videos and then they're able to just like, oh, that okay, yeah, okay, I'm going to move on with my life now. So I did. Um, but then about a year ago, almost to today, <laughs> wow. oddly enough, um, it came back and it came back um, in quite a way. So a reason I remember to the day is because I texted my husband on March 6th and I said, I almost just passed out. Like I was almost, you know, I don't, I don't feel quite right. Um, luckily enough, because I had it in 2019, I was like, gosh, this is so familiar. I wasn't, I wasn't totally bought in on like mind, body or any of that, but at least I had journaled back in 2019. And I looked back and I was like, I feel like I'm walking on a boat. I feel like I'm on a trampoline. Like I was saying the same things that I was experiencing. So I tried to kind of just ride it out like I did last time. Um, so I started doing with like, I'll just get a massage. Like I'm just stressed out. Um, I'll get some acupuncture. Like I was kind of just doing like, I don't know. I was sticking my face in an ice bath every morning. <laughs> like I was just which, trying. Yeah, yeah. Which actually is really, really helpful, <laughs> Yeah, but it typically won't solve the problem. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so then by the end of March, I got my first doctor's appointment. Um, and I was already crying and I was thinking, oh, I have MS. And she's like, what? And I mean, with the health, and health anxiety, I mean, I have a list I can get into later of all the conditions that I thought I had or <laughs> not. Um, but anyway, she was like, let's just start with blood work. Um, so they took my blood work. The most that showed up was low iron, but it wasn't even significant. Um, so I started taking iron thinking this is the magic, this was the answer I was looking for. I just had low iron. Um, and I knew it wasn't quite right because I went I went to, on spring break in April. Um, my husband and I are both teachers and we were on spring break together and we love to do hiking. And I was on a hike and the car ride there, I was totally fine. Totally fine. I was like, what? I never had any of this. I get out of the car, we go on a hike, and I find myself like counting my steps. So I would I would count until I had a, a weird step. Like I felt off. So I'd be like, I'd get up into like the 70s. And I'd be like, 71, 72. Oh, that was weird. That felt odd. And then some, you know, like it was inconsistent. It didn't, something wasn't lining up. And then I'd go in the hot tub and I'd feel fine. Like um, these kind of signs early on that I that line with line with triple PD, um, but I didn't know. Um, so that was going on and my anxiety was spiraling out of control. Um, I was going to physical therapy appointments. They weren't finding anything. They were doing screeners like, 
you know, you don't have the nystagmus in your eye or anything like that. Um, and uh, mind you, these appointments are so far from each other. So in between me meeting with these people, I'm freaking out. <laughs> um, and I'm spiraling. And then in April, I go to the ER because these these appointments are so far and few between that I was like, I need an answer. Like, I just need to get to the ER. Someone's going to tell me what's going on. I'm going to get the MRI that I want and it's going to be done. Um, but I went to the ER the first time and they just gave me like a patch, like the squall of, I forget what it's called, like for dizziness. Copalamine? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they gave me that. And I was like, well, I have tinnitus and I have this. And he's like, no, you're good. Like those aren't related. Like, it's, it's fine. And so I went home and the thing with health anxiety, health anxiety is that when you have those brief moments of your fine, you feel okay for a couple of days <laughs> and you feel like I can do this um, cause you had some reassurance. Um, but then it, it spikes back up. Um, and so I went to the ER a, a week later, <laughs> didn't last long. And this was by far the scariest night of my life. Um, I woke up like I did a lot during that time. I would wake up in the middle of the night. Um, but I woke up and I tried to walk to the bathroom and I remember just falling to the ground and I didn't fall out of dizziness. I was just like, you know, I, I don't know how to explain it. Like I was just so overwhelmed. I just dropped to the ground and, um, I started throwing up, which I hadn't before. Um, and that was really scary because that was validating all my fears that it was something more serious. Um, and I was like, I've never vomited before. This has to be something. So my wonderful husband drives me to the ER again at like- so This is number three. This is number two. Number two, okay. Number two. Okay. Um, again, and so I get out, I'm still vomiting. Um, they take me in. All he does is give me Valium. Um, the, like the anti-anxiety stuff. He's like, this normally helps people. I was like, this isn't helping me. This is making me worse because I feel even more out of control. Um, and I was like, can I just get, can I just get the MRI? Can I just do the CT right now? Like, give me the answer. And he's like, uh, we can't do that right now, but I can refer you to this other PT who's really good with stuff like this. I was like, okay. <laughs> Um, stop me at any time. Should I just keep, just keep going? Keep this is so <laughs> wonderful. I, I have been, I, I'm usually just trying to divert people and like get people back on the timeline. No, please keep going with the timeline. We'll come back and revisit all this. Go, okay. go, go. You're amazing. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. Um, <clears throat> so then I'm, this is the end of April. Now I'm going back to the doctor again. Um, I'm saying we're, we're doing more blood work. She refers me to a cardiologist. Um, and, it, um, then I go in the meantime, between that to the next cardiologist, I start diving into therapy. So I look for a psychiatrist and a therapist. Um, and I was able to link up with both of them. Um, also during this time I go to the dentist and my dentist for some reason is telling me, you might have low iron or use red light therapy. So I'm like, again, I'm back on the iron train or like, it's, it's just the light. Like I'm just looking into, I can't think of anything I didn't look into. <laughs> and I, I, you know, I was open to anything when you're in that head space, you'll try anything. Um, so end of April, I go to get more blood work. Everything's fine. They're checking my hormone levels at this point. Everything's fine. I go see um, the ENT finally. Um, my hearing testing's fine. Um, every test I could do is fine. And then I'm referred to more high high tech like vestibular testing where the goggles are on. People have talked about and it's mm -hmm. oh my gosh, that was hellish like when they <laughs> blew the air in my ears that was like all my worst fears coming true i was like this is horrible i was crying and she was like well a guy has punched a full grown adult male has tried to punch me during this before so you're 
this is nothing. You're doing good. Because it's so scary for people. It's so frightening anyway. Yeah. Um, I, I have a lot to say, though, about what, like, a little bit of, of skill around how we talk about this to people can make such a difference. Mm -hmm. But yes, they are very uncomfortable tests, especially when you're being told they're going to be uncomfortable exactly. and yeah. scary. Yeah. But having that beforehand thinking it's going to be uncomfortable just makes it worse. But. Right. For sure. For sure. I'm sorry that it was like that for you. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's, it's okay. Um, uh, it's just one of the puzzle pieces that I needed to try to figure this out. Um, and I assume they found that you were a hundred percent like happy, healthy, normal, and nothing was found. Yeah. Correct. So I went back to the ENT after that and it was like a two second meeting um, where he had the results in front of him. I think he opened like the first page and was like, oh yeah, these were all normal. It's fine. And I was like, okay. And he's like, I can tell you're really anxious though. And sometimes you just need an answer and we can do the MRI. And I was like, okay, great. Um, so I had that scheduled. Um, but obviously it takes a couple months. So in the meantime, I was still looking into different things. I actually saw, I thought it was my jaw. Um, so which I've heard from other people on here before. Um, so I went to like a TMJ massage specialist. She was massaging the inside of my mouth. Um, all of that. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah. And I ended up going to the psychiatrist. Um, and this piece, I, I want to preface by saying that I've, I have played with the idea of um, anxiety medication prior to triple PD. Um, I know you are not for or against, you know, I know everyone has their own journey. Ultimately, um, I did start going on SSRIs. I went on Wellbutrin personally. I just needed that as a tool to come back to some, so, I mean, I, I, I'll get into this, but I was depersonalization. I was like, I was not in my body and I couldn't, I needed something to bring me to some sort of down from high escalation where I could use this as a tool to address this appropriately. Yes. It was not, I took a pill and I don't have triple PD. Correct. That is not yes. what happened. It just brought me to a place where I could address it um, without, you know, crying and panicking all day. Um, so and I did make that choice. Emma, that is, thank you for, for, for voicing that. That's exactly how I think medications should be used. Like, because how I, I I mean I'm saying this with a smile like unjokingly but this is serious right how am I supposed to tell someone okay well we need to figure out what stress in your life might be dealing might be causing some of this when they're just in complete panic all the time like how are they supposed to do any of that work right so mm -hmm. not to say that some people choose medications or some people don't there are different ways to 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 work with it and I totally respect people's individual choices about that but that what you're describing it sounds like it was the right choice. It is interesting to me that they chose Wellbutrin rather than an SSRI or SNRI. But I mean, it, it, I assume again, that if it if it helped you, that's, that's what really matters. I mean, yeah. that's what really matters. Yeah, I think that had to do with like, um, I hope my brother does. I don't think my brother would care, but he's also on Wellbutrin. I think if it works for other family members, so they knew it might yeah, be best for you. They, okay. they tend to be like, Oh, it worked mm -hmm. for your your sibling, like, let's mm -hmm. try it. Um, right. So I did. And that, that did bring me to a place where I could then address this like appropriately. So that, that was um, probably a pivotal point um, in my journey. Um, so then I'm, this is through the summer now, we're moving into August. So again, this started in March. So looking at August, I'm still getting, so at this point I'm going to a chiropractor and I'm getting massages. So I'm thinking this is cervical or um, the cervo, the spine. Cervicogenic? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're on to cervicogenic dizziness yeah. now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm doing that. I'm getting cracked, snap, crackle popped at the chiropractor, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Um, eventually I just faded out with that. You know, I started to lean heavier into the mind body and the neural circuit piece. Um, by by now I'm seeing oh I'm sorry I jumped ahead I'm I'm into if I went back to June um I was seeing a started thing, seeing a therapist um and this was also a pivotal point um shout out to my therapist she is so familiar with neuroplasticity 
um, and like neural circuit things. And she had knowledge about um, kind of like p related to pain and the neuroplasticity wow. of pain. And I was so okay. lucky. Yeah. That was a. How did you was, find her, Emma? Was this just a stroke of luck, or did it, you? It was a stroke of luck. I finding a therapist is challenging because you're just looking at, like, you're just looking online and you don't know these people. Um, and she just looked like a nice person, and her office was in a pretty place. <laughs> nice. Okay. <laughs> I was like, let's try it. Um, and as I told her my story um she was really familiar she referred me to a podcast like a couple podcasts about neuroplasticity and i started listening to those in addition to to you and it kind of helped me um where did you find me what what, what point uh what time oh um when, that's the word yes when did you find me <laughs> i would say i found you gosh i probably I remember texting my mom that summer. So it started in March. So it must have been like a, maybe like a month and a half to two months in. But I wasn't fully sold. Totally. People are. So, yeah. yeah. So um, I think that everyone kind of has their own personal threshold for medical testing that they need in order to accept that it's mind body if that makes sense like some person might have the mri and be like i'm good i'm done but whereas i needed the cardiologist the mri the blood work the chiropractor the like all of that to finally yeah to finally be like okay are all your boxes checked like uh, even my therapist i had a heart echo not that long ago and she's like are you done now <laughs> And I was like, not, not in a mean way, but not, yeah. not she was so gentle about the whole process. But yes. she, like, I bet you that the, you know, I will bet my life that those results are normal. And then, yeah. So after that, she's like, is it neuroplastic now? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway. She sounds wonderful. Oh <laughs> yeah, she, she's, she's great. great. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, so I started therapy that was really helpful. Um, I also thought that I might have POTS. So in between, in this time in July, I'm going to a POTS clinic specialist. Um, they don't do anything that hasn't already been done. So I'm on the table, I sit up, blood pressure is fine or heart rate's fine. And um, he's like, if you want to keep testing this, you can buy your own little blood pressure thing. And just what you need. <laughs> uh, more focus on, on the things that could potentially be going wrong. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, and so that does nothing comes of that. Um, and then at the end of July, I then also go to an eye doctor. Um, that's because when I was looking in the mirror, I was like, oh my gosh, my pupils are different sizes at random times. I thought I had all sorts of vision stuff. I mean, I can go into all the symptoms I had. It's a long list, but you know, I would stare at the sky and be like, I'm seeing snow. I've never seen this before. Um, but I, I have, I like, <laughs> I, I didn't have anything different in my vision and my anxiety was just so high um, that I was looking for anything. Went to the eye doctor, um, everything was fine. Uh, so I was just, again, another box to check for me. And August, things start tapering off. I'm giving more energy to the neuroplastic route, neural circuit route. And really I don't do anything again until January of this year where I finally got a heart uh, echo that's because it was denied the first time by insurance because they said that the like basically you don't have anything else that would warrant this other than the dizziness and that's not enough so I was like okay fine but then my anxiety got so so it was bad and I still hadn't checked that box so I opted to try to do it again for the heart echo and then it went through and so I had it done and I just I just needed that last piece. Um, and that pretty much catches up with the timeline aside from um, last month, I took a trip to Joshua Tree and it was so, super fun. And, but I also got COVID immediately after. And I do feel like there was kind of a regression in symptoms for me, like a down, which I know is totally normal up and down travel COVID. Like it all makes sense. I watched both your videos on that. <laughs> yeah. too. Um, and so I'm kind of right now just on the upswing from that. Mm -hmm. It takes us to March and yeah. yeah.
Amazing. Oh my gosh. I'm, I have so many viewers who've been begging me to just get into people's timelines the way that you just got into your timeline. So thank you so much for the organization. Shout out to everyone else who I've interviewed. It's my fault that you haven't gotten into your timelines because I don't think like in a timeline way. So I'm constantly asking people questions and <laughs> just like diverting them. But thank you. That was yeah. so clear and so helpful. And okay. I have so many questions. Okay. So many questions. Okay. So I think the one top of mind, people are going to want to know what were your symptoms and I know you have a list, so go for it. Let's hear it. Okay. <clears throat> My symptoms were, <laughs> um, I had vision, vision issues, weakness in my grip. I had jaw pain. I had zings in my ear. I had brain fog. I felt like I was walking on a boat, obviously. I had issues swallowing. I had issues speaking. I had insomnia um, to the point where I would jolt awake in the middle of the night. And I would do this odd thing because I thought I was like losing my, um, something was wrong with my cognition, like my cognitive ability. So I'd wake up in the middle of night and I would quiz myself facts about myself. So I would be like, what's, where am I at? Where's, what's my address? Like, what's my zip code? It was so, it was so bizarre, but I was like trying to prove to myself that I wasn't losing it anyway. Um, I had nausea, vomiting, I had no appetite, I had brain pains, um, I had disassociation or depersonalization. I'm not, I've heard both options for me. That was the, oh, that was just the worst one. Um, pulsing in my neck, in my ear, I had tingling and numbness and so many panic attacks. And yeah, I think my biggest symptom is um first it was 24 7. i was never off the boat i would joke with my friends like they're like are you still on the carnival cruise and i was like still on the cruise um still on that cruise they just haven't gotten back to the dock and you know like it it was it actually brought light like the humor to it but anyway i had it 24 7 but eventually it really just came with like walking was my big one um so yeah walking was always my big one and yeah, I mean, you, you're like, oh, what are the more things? I'm like, oh my gosh, you just listed like 40 different things that <laughs> were going wrong. Wow. So I, I can only imagine, I guess this would be the, a good follow-up question, how this was interfering with your daily life. You're a teacher, you're in special education, you have to be on point during your daily life. So how, especially at this phase earlier in the game where you're, experiencing this 24 seven, how is this impacting you? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, so one of the first thing that comes to mind, um, there'd be days where I was teaching, um, if I could even make it there. Um, I spent a lot of my mornings sobbing on the floor. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> so hard. I knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> Um, at least one saying I can't do it. Um, every morning, sorry, to my husband saying I can't do it. Um, <clears throat> but I would get there and I'd normally make it till like maybe 11 a.m. <clears throat> but I would, sometimes I would, I would, I have, I'm special ed. So like there was this one time where I only had like one kid in my room at a time, thank God. And bless this kid, but he was like working on a project. And I said, like, have you ever heard of meditation? Like Miss K is going to go meditate on the rug in the back. I mean, like, I just couldn't, I couldn't. And I would go to the staff lounge and I was so embarrassed because I'd be like, I would want to lay down. So I'd lay on the couch and the nurses would come check on me. And I would say like, I think I have pots. I think I have this. And they'd be checking things for me and my, uh, the wonderful office um secretary would like drive me home i thought about taking a leave of absence um all the time um yeah i think i can't think of a more dark time in my life um i would be in the shower like my husband had to stand outside the shower and talk to me so i could make it through it and and then eventually i had to just 
I was blasting like Christina Aguilera, like the fighter song. <laughs> I have like a playlist um, of songs that would like keep me going. Um, when I was going through these questions with my husband, I got emotional as well um, because he's like, why the way you're talking, it seemed like you, you like said you'd given up, like you didn't really want to keep going. It makes it sounds like you were having like, you know, the ending your life thoughts. And I was like, it's really hard to say out loud, but like I, in those times I thought this isn't a life I can live. I can't do it. And that's going to be really hard for me, probably my parents listening, but mm -hmm. I thought to myself, if this is, this is it, like, I can't do it. Um, cause it was so, so hard. I hadn't, I lost myself. Like I wasn't, I wasn't even in there. I couldn't find myself like any part of me, any mm -hmm. joy, anything. Um, and the depersonalization was horrible because you're not even in your body at that point. You're just going through the motions and yeah, I, I hope that answered your question. I, yeah. <laughs> it was, yeah. Just horrible. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for being willing to go back there with yeah. me so others can can know they're not alone because some of them are are right there right now where yeah. you were and they're going to hear you say this and they're going to say okay she's not there anymore so there's hope for me too right? oh my gosh yes yeah, so much hope um so much hope i would listen to these success stories back when i was in that spot and i was like and this is something I want to touch on later, but like, I used to think I was the exception. Mm. It was, and I know you talk about this on your channel. I thought like, that's not going to be me. I have something different. I, I'm not going to be like those people that I'm the exception. They're the rule. And you're not the exception. You're not, you can, you, you can do it. Like it will get better. And it's so hard to picture that when, you can't even get off the floor, like to get, to go to work. Um, so yeah. Yeah. I, you know, what's coming to my mind. I, I have these moments at the end of the day when I shut down my computer and like I'm out walking the dog or whatever I'm doing and I just, my mind wanders. And then I just, I recollect hearing stories like this or just kind of seeing the daily struggles of my clients and I'm just like, I'm in awe. I'm in awe at the resilience and courage of people who are going through that and still manage to claw their way out. It's yeah. just, it's, it's awe inspiring and miraculous and just like sacred. I, I'm sorry to use words like that, but that's what it feels yeah. like to me to see that. So I'm wondering like, how did you end up finding it within yourself not to take a leave of absence, like not to just give up at that time. What, what did you call on to oh just gosh, keep yeah. going? Uh, um, well, luckily it was towards the end of the school year. So that kept me going. Like I was like, it's almost summer break. Like you can do it. But I mean, I had the paperwork filled out and I even had it filled out at the beginning of this school year, just in case, like, cause I was so scared about starting school again. Um, mm -hmm. But what I found um, to help me come out of that, I would say your channel, the therapy helped, the Wellbutrin helped. Um, and um, once I accepted it was neural circuit, it, you know, your fear diminishes over time. And once you reach that threshold of things, like you can start coming out of it. I mean, I also had a wonderful support system, like, uh, also your channel reading through comments like brought me a lot of peace um but my husband and my friends and my family um were huge for me um during that time like even my friends calling it but the carnival cruise it sounds silly but like when i was you know sobbing to them on the on the floor and they're able to just crack a little joke like that gave me just a glimmer of light when i was like in such a dark hole. Um, and also, um, yoga was huge for me. I know people kind of say like, <laughs> I feel like with a lot of this stuff, it's like, do yoga. 
And it's like, <laughs> it's just like, I just want to okay. roll my eyes. Like, yeah, do yoga. I'll cure everything. It's like, no, but, um, it was huge for me because it started to help me regain my confidence because I'd be like, okay, if I'm so dizzy, how can I hold this half moon pose? Like, how can I, you know, I was starting to convince myself, um, that I was able to do these things, um, through that. So that was really big for me. I, uh, movement was huge for me. Like, you know, trying to do different strength moves or yoga, like little tiny bits um, to help reconvince my mind um, that I wasn't going to fall over or um, I was still strong and I was still in there. So, yeah, I, don't, I hope that answered your question. Yeah. yeah. I, again, I that thank you for answering it. I think you are spot on getting reassurance, getting real life support from loved ones. I know that seems so silly doing yoga. It also, it seems silly. It seems like such a cop out like, Oh, do yoga. It'll get better. Yeah. Exactly. Like you said it. Um, but it's cumulative. Like the changes we're trying to make, we're trying to shift the needle towards safety. And those little things really matter. Yeah. Those little things, those little things you do give you just a little more confidence, just a little more agency. And, and at some point, Oh my gosh, I'm back in the green mm -hmm. instead of being in the red and things start to really get better. So I do, I agree with you. In what yeah. You um, and something that you just reminded me of, um, that a friend recommended to me is like, have a little log or something on your phone that you can track, like how you felt each day. That was helpful for me because on my dark days, I would look back to five days ago and be like, well, five days ago you did a pottery class and you said you had a great day and your symptoms were minimal. So that was reassuring during the dark times. Like, no, you don't have some horrible ailment. Um, it is neural circuit because look what happened three days ago. Um, so yeah, I, that a little note. Tracking the good days can be super helpful. Yeah, yeah, I would write letters to myself, like in my phone, like today really sucks, but I love you. Like you have this, <laughs> you can do this. Those are really hard to read now, but um, very helpful at the time. Oh, yeah. It's like a testimonial for yourself and words of compassion. These are tools, by the way, I teach people to, to use. So brilliant. Brilliant. I completely also completely agree. Those are really helpful. So, okay. So coming back to things, things were really hard. You started at, at this point, things like the darkest times, it sounds like were before you started therapy and the Wellbutrin and, yeah. um, really starting to kind of buy into this idea that things were neural circuit. So I'm wondering if you can share what, what was changing, like not just chemically, but like in therapy or in the other work you were doing, what was changing beyond just believing, Oh, this is a neural circuit problem that was helping you feel safer or that you, you credit now with helping you with the symptoms. Mm. I'm looking at my, I'm looking back at my notes really quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, sure. What was helpful um, is that I would start noticing that there was chunks of time and that I would go without symptoms. Um, so at first it was like, I kid you not, it was maybe two seconds, two seconds. Right, right, right. There may Ooh. even just be two seconds. Yes. Good, no. good point. Yes. No. And then it was like 30 minutes and then it was like, oh, I had a whole activity. And so these spans of time were passing where I was getting joy back into my life because before I would try to distract myself. Um, I'd be watching, I love reality TV. I'd be watching reality TV or playing a video game and I couldn't even do that. Like I couldn't even focus enough, not on the symptoms to enjoy those things. Um, so the fact now that I can enjoy those things is huge. Like I was talking to my friend on the phone. I was like, oh, well, I, I went to Joshua Tree and I had COVID and I feel like I've regressed a little bit. And so I think I'm just going to go watch Love is Blind and try to distract myself. She's like, Emma, when I was there visiting you, you couldn't even distract yourself. You took the Valium from the doctor to try to watch the reality show and we were sitting there and you were like spiraling. Like you, you were like, couldn't even do that. 
Um, so that to me was like, oh, okay, I'm getting chunks of my life back. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so that So that that's was- a really good point. Like having a way of noticing what's going well when your brain wants to pull you into like everything is going poorly. Like we have this negativity bias, obviously. I mean, this is just the way our brains are built. We're supposed to notice and remember hard or bad things better than we notice and remember positive or helpful things. So it sounds like finding ways of documenting and having other people remind you of times where things are going well and the improvements you've made has been a huge part of this for you. Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, Meditation was huge for me. Mm -hmm. Um, And obviously in therapy, I was working through internal family symptoms, systems, which I know you've talked about. I've worked on, you know, all facets of my anxiety disorder. I'm, I'm like diving so much deeper. Like once I knew it was mind body, I was like, okay, we have a lot to unpack here. (laughs) We have a lot to unpack here. So yeah, that, that was huge. Um, yeah, I just can't believe like thinking back to where I was. Um, and now, even though I wouldn't say I'm a hundred percent, I am now living a life. Like I want to wake up every day and do this. Like I'm, I'm, I know we're not totally into like where I'm at now, but I just, yeah, I'm thinking ahead. I also have a list of all the conditions I thought I had. Oh, if yes, please. <laughs> We'd love to hear that. Yes. Health, maybe health, 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 anxiety. This is hard. This is a hard, was a hard list for me to make because, um, I wouldn't say embarrassing. It kind of, I mean, it's the way your, yeah, your brain takes you like the way you're, I was listening to like Mark's success story, the way you're latching onto everything, you know, you're, you're Googling things, you're latching onto everything. You're looking into all your results, trying to find the one thing. So that's what I was doing. But anyway, this is the conditions I thought I had at one time or another. POTS, ALS, TMJ, Lyme disease, cervical dizziness, mal de embarkment. I never say that one. Mal de debarkment. Vestibular migraines, acoustic neuroma, a brain tumor, MS, breast cancer that had traveled to my spine. Um, I thought it was like an ovary or hormone issue. I had a ultrasound of both my breasts and my uterus during this time. Um, An iron deficient, obviously, mold exposure. Um, And that's the list. Wow. But yeah. um, my neuro- the neurologist that I saw, um, I didn't get like a formal diagnosis of triple PD, but I came very knowledgeable into the doctor's appointment and was like, here's everything I'm doing. I think it's neuroplastic. And she's like, you already know about neuroplasticity and neural circuit dizziness. And I was like, yeah. She's like, um, yeah. So I think it could be triple PD or vestibular migraine. Those were the two diagnoses, I guess I kind of received. But right. Which is in my heart. Yeah. Right. Right in line with what you already knew. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Thank you for normalizing that. Again, it's not everyone. Some people, um, you know, don't have the, you know, the health anxiety, but a lot of people do. And every time they have a new symptom or an up and down, it's like all over. It's like, it's like Groundhog Day for them. Right. So how'd you cope with that? Because it seems like you, you, you said at one point you just reached the threshold, like, okay, fine. I, I, I accept this. But then there are ups and downs in the process and you have new symptoms and then someone's going to put into your head, oh, maybe it's a new thing or you're going to get a thought like, oh, it could be ALS or it could be this. Like, how did you cope with that? I mean, to be honest, not well. <laughs> um, not well. I mean, I'm here now. Like, I made it through. But um, yeah, I think because the symptoms were so up and down, I was able to convince myself, like, if it was something so serious, like I'd be dead by now, or like, they would have found something by now. Mm -hmm. Um, So working through those issues, working through talking about those two, having sounding boards of people that were maybe in a more rational place, when I was so convinced that I was rational, like I was convinced I had these things like 100%. Um, But taking a step back and using some of my community people, like saying those things out loud. Once you say, I ha- think I had breast cancer that traveled from my spine. When you say that out loud, like it starts to lose its value 
Um, cause I can tell myself that a million times in the privacy of my own brain and convince myself. Um, but once you start working through that, it starts to, yeah, not yeah, the same. Definitely. I don't know if that answers, answers that question, it does. but it um, does. So if I can kind of extrapolate from what you're saying for people who are going through that, it, obviously, Emma, you have, again, the advantage of having, it sounds like an amazing support system. So running those thoughts by your support system might be helpful. Even just saying them out loud or writing them down might also, people worry that if they say them out loud or write them down, it's going to make them more real and then it's going to be more likely. But actually, it's the opposite. When yeah. you write it down, other parts of your brain can get recruited and be like, wait a second, this doesn't, this doesn't quite pass the logic test, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a really, I think that's a good tool people can use. And then it also sounds like you're, you're also, it's forced you to dive deeper. You, you kind of realize it sounds like that, hey, if I'm going to conquer this thing, I've got to get the health anxiety yeah. um, worked through in a way that I've never done before. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I have a health anxiety workbook that I was doing. Like, mm -hmm. I... I knew that that was really what was happening as I was talking to my therapist and my psychiatrist. Um, yeah, but in this triple PD, like, yes, it, I think of it as like linked with anxiety because anxiety is like propelling it forward, but it's also the symptoms are giving you anxiety yeah. and people just throw around anxiety, anxiety, anxiety. I'm like, yes, I know I have an anxiety disorder, but can I please tell you that these symptoms are They're so real. real? Yes. And they are escalating my anxiety. And triple PD is not something that just like flows off the tongue that people know about. So when you're trying to, you know, I'm in the staff room crying and there's no visible ailments or things that are easily describable to people. Like I broke my leg, so this is really hard. It's 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 invisible. Like, and that's really that's a challenging thing to navigate because yeah. people are like, yeah, that sounds really hard, but it's really hard to resonate with if you don't have that, if you haven't experienced it. Like, yes. Yeah. I am just so happy that you brought this up. And this is why I'm so careful on my channel. I don't use the word anxiety very much, not because I don't think anxiety is involved in this process, but because I'm trying to meet people where they're at and anxiety, people think of anxiety as a mental health issue. And so it's like, no, you don't understand. These symptoms aren't in my head. And I'm like, yeah. oh, I know the symptoms are real. All symptoms that anyone has are always in their brain, whether they have like an <laughs> arm wound or neural circuit dizziness. It's the brain that's always making decisions about what things mean, but it's yeah. not a mental health disorder. You're not just like, imagining things and it's just like, no, I'm just coming up with this because I'm, you know, just super anxious. No, it's anxiety. And, and I, I like to use the term danger mode rather than anxiety because anxiety mm -hmm. has that again, mental health connotation, but danger mode is a body, a body situation. It's a central nervous system state. And so it, in, in a central nervous system state of threat prediction or threat response, we can have physical symptoms. So the question isn't, is it just anxiety? That it's really, is this being driven by tissue damage or is this being driven by nervous system mistakes, right? Right, right. And I feel like that's just a very different way of thinking about it than, oh, it's either anxiety or it's not, right? It, that's a lot less mm -hmm. dismissive of people. And I, I totally hear you on this. And I, I feel like if someone at that time, when you were that miserable, lying down crying and said, you know, this is just anxiety. Uh, like, how could you, how could you say that to someone? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Thank you for letting me get on my soapbox about no, that. No. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it's a huge part of it, like structural versus neuroplastic. And yeah, that that's, that's the yeah. root of it. Yeah. 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 So Tell, tell us where you're at today. I know you okay. touched on that a bit earlier, but tell us where you're at. Okay. Um, so where I'm at today, I mean, after I said I had kind of like a recent down in February, um, but compared to where I was um, a year ago, it's, 
it's night and day. Like all of my, my friends, my family, my husband, like, they're like, this is your, you're here, you're back. Like you don't sound anything like you used to. Um, for example, I went to a hip hop class last night, something I never dreamed of, um, which is wonderful for this kind of thing because you're, you're in your body and you're feeling free and you're moving and you're having fun and you're having all these positive associations. Um, and you're with, spinning around and yeah. Um, and yeah, so that's really great. I mean, I had little goals like throughout, like little, little goals for myself, like, uh, Back maybe five, six months ago, my goal was to just go to a public yoga class, like in person, because I have a I have a Peloton, so I do all my stuff at home. Um, and being out was really hard for me, you know, like I would cry in grocery stores, cry in Lowe's. I mean, all that kind of stuff that people talk about on this channel. Um, and so I had little bite-sized goals, like I'd go to my first yoga class and I did that and it went great. And then, you know, I kept going and then now it's going to hip hop and um now it's trying to be scuba certified which i had put on the yeah. back burner last year because i was like oh my gosh i can't go scuba it's gonna mess with my vestibular system and the air pressures and stuff and now i'm um trying to schedule that so yeah where i'm at now you know i think my biggest symptoms um happen probably like on on walks like I'm still working, working on that, like sometimes, especially with the recent like regression, I'm trying to get that back. Um, and then riding my Peloton was always a little challenging. It's a stationary bike. There's a screen. It's a lot going on there. Um, so that one I'm still working on. Um, but, you know, I never shied. I, I shouldn't say I never shied, but exposure therapy was huge for me. I never, I always wanted to keep trying the things that were scaring me. Like even if my husband and I were out to dinner at a restaurant <laughs> and I was like this and I was like had tears in my eyes, I was like, I'm still here. I'm still here. <laughs> I haven't left yet. You know, like um, still doing those uh, exposures were big for me throughout. But anyway, um, yeah, I would say I went from a negative 1000 percent to like probably like a 84 five right now but a 95 prior to my little setback recently if i had to put a number to it mm -hmm. wonderful yeah. yeah and you're still you're still working on this stuff it yeah. hasn't it's been like you said a year and um i'm pretty confident that if i talk to you in a year <laughs> you're gonna be at 100 percent. i just spoke to vivian i don't know if you heard her story uh so she when I, when I interviewed her, she was around where you're at right now. Mm -hmm. And I interviewed her a year later and she's just a hundred percent completely fine. So wow. I'm, I am, comp I am just sure that given a little bit more time, you're going to get there. So yeah. I'm, I'm again, though, it sounds like even though there are some sensations and things aren't perfect. It sounds like you're living a normal life. And that, oh. that's what people are really going to want to hear right now. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah. Oh my and you're gosh. living a joyful and meaningful life and you can go to work and you can go out with friends and you can go to hip hop class and you can go to yoga and that you're, you're not held back and you, you went traveling. Yeah. You're not held back anymore. Yeah. It, exactly. Right. Um, I don't wake up. Um, I wake up my day thinking about like, not, I'm not thinking about my dizziness. You know, I'm thinking about what I'm doing that day. Um, I told my psychiatrist, psychiatrist, like, I'm just greedy for that last 5%. And he's like, well, I don't say greedy. It's just normal. Like, uh, you know, yeah. don't phrase it that way. Like, you're greedy for the last 5%. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. And put a lot, you know, you end up putting a lot of pressure on it that last little bit because you've come so far. Um, but I mean, doing this with you and, like reliving some of the stuff I went through. I was like, dude, come on, come on. Like you made it so far. Stop being, you know, you're, you're living a wonderful, fulfilling life right now. Mm -hmm. um, and I want people to know that that is so possible, not the exception. <laughs> um, and that's something I really needed to hear in some of my darkest times. Um, it's just a patient process. You know, there's a quote that 
I read it's like it's a perfect balance between making it happen and letting it happen. You do have to put forth effort, but you also have to like not have fear associated with the symptoms too. So it's this balance, you know, you can't spend all day during doing the vestibular exercises. Um, you can't be the A plus student. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So it's a delicate, it's a delicate balance and it's so much inner work, which is, was a hard part to accept. You got to find what works for your journey. Like some people are going to be doing the exercises at the cards at first, and that makes them feel good. For me, yoga was helping building my confidence. So that was a, it has to be a routine that works for you. Um, and something that you can stick to that helps build your confidence. Um, yeah. yeah. And you mentioned vestibular therapy. Is that something you did in a structured way as well during the process or not after the beginning? Um, not after my two screener, like the screener people, um, okay. the, the guy literally said, I don't think that I can, I can address this with you. I don't want to tell you that, um, you to be my client and do this with you. Um, Got and, it. yeah. Uh, when I said, sorry, when I said like vestibular exercise, I was talking more about like your videos, um, where you're like, teach, yeah. you know, the different things, the whole little regimen there. Yeah. And then, yeah, and I, just for clarity, because people who are newer to my channel may not know this, most of my clients don't do vestibular therapy at all. I, I, I will often have people do one round, and but they'll usually, by the time they've get, gotten to me, have already done a round mm -hmm. of vestibular therapy and it not helped. But I'm, my point is vestibular therapy is not the answer mm -hmm. when it's a neuroplastic condition. Mm -hmm. So when it's a neural circuit dizziness issue, like you said, um, not to say that you shouldn't be stimulating your vestibular system, but often yeah. that's happening, just doing things, doing mm -hmm. normal things. So. Right. Yeah. Keep trying to live your life. Yeah. And I'll, I'll link to a video in the description that talks about vestibular therapy specifically. So if people want to know more information about that, I'll put that, I'll put that in the video description. Okay. So I know you made a lot of notes, so I just want to give you the opportunity. Is there anything else you'd like to share? Any other words of advice or, or thoughts or experiences that you think people should know? Gosh, um, I'm looking over my little notes. Um, <clears throat> in the advice section, I wrote, patience, patience. We live in a world of instant gratification. I was constantly searching for the quick fix. Um, and there's not one for this. And it's hard because the work is all on you. Um, it's There's tools and people that's going to help you, but it's really, really about your mindset. And that's challenging to wrap your head around. Um, because at first you're like, oh, good, it's not something more serious. But then you're like, oh, wait. I have to do this all. <laughs> I have to do, I have to be the one, me. Um, so yeah. That, that. I think you've given people so much actionable information in this, in this interview. I'm just, I'm just so delighted that you reached out to me. And again, <laughs> I know, I know, I remember, I mean, maybe there are other Emmas. I'm sure there are other Emmas among my audience. So shout out to all of you Emmas out there, but I am almost positive because I remember you feeling particularly anxious. Is that possible that you would leave, that you left it's me totally comments, like anxious comments? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I really do keep remembering you being particularly sweet and particularly anxious. And I, again, nowadays, because I get so many comments, I can't respond to all of them anymore, but I do, I do remember yours. So again, it's surreal yeah, for me yeah. too, to get to meet the person on the other side of those comments. So cool. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for this opportunity. Like, I really appreciate it. Um, sharing this, sharing this story was something, like I said, like in the beginning, I thought maybe that'll be me someday when I've listened to your podcast and all the people before that have shared and to be on here, it's, it's really something. Um, but yeah, happy to talk to anyone who ever needs a listening ear out there. Um, you got this. <laughs> Oh, thank you. This, again, just jam-packed. This conversation has been jam-packed mm -hmm. with with tools people can use and apply to themselves. And if nothing else, reassurance that it's possible, even after being in the low place that you were at. Yeah, definitely. Yeah.
Well, thank you, Emma. And thanks to all of you for tuning in. As always, I love hearing from you, even though I can't respond to all the comments. I read as many comments as I can, and especially on newer videos. So if you leave me comments and questions, I will look at them. I love knowing that these interviews help you. If you're listening to this as a podcast, you can also join us and join the conversation on YouTube. And I would greatly appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel or follow the podcast. All of these things help me reach more people. Thank you all so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Thank you, Emma. Take care, everyone. Bye.